Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit educational Break the Cycle website. I've been a professional family therapist for 31 years and a student of human behavior for seven decades. Um, the website that I put together from all that my thousand plus clients have taught me over the years uh, seven, is eight self-improvement lessons. The fourth is about relationships, improving your relationships. What is a common fact is that many relationships have problems, often because of the unawareness in our general society about how to maintain uh, healthy relationships and families. People need professional help to resolve or prevent major relationship problems. That poses the question, how can you choose or evaluate a clinical or professional helper who is going to be effective at helping you resolve relationship problems? If you've never used a therapist or a counselor or a coach before, this can be a pretty confusing question. The purpose of this video is to distill for you a complex subject, but offer you some specific concrete ideas about how can you shop for an effective relationship helper, meaning a counselor or therapist. How can you do that? What are, what are some criteria you can use to shop successfully? First, you need to know that there are three broad kinds of uh, therapy. There's individual therapy for one person who's working on trying to improve themselves. There's couples therapy, or alias marital therapy. And there's family therapy, which involves two or more members of a family. It's different than marital therapy. So f the first step is to know what are you looking for, individual, couple, or family therapy. There's a bunch of different brands of therapists and counselors who help with all three of these types of therapy. Um, there's an article in Lesson 4 in my website that explains in some detail what are these different types of therapists and what makes the difference between them. I don't want to summarize that here other than to broadly say there are licensed practical counselors, clinical social workers, clinical psychiatrists, clinical psychologists, um, marriage and family therapists. Each one of these has many things in common and has some unique characteristics. It's good if you know in advance what's the difference between each of these types of therapists. See the article in Lesson 4 in my website. There are three types of goals, generally, uh, many variations, but three main types of goals that people go to professional helpers for. One, they want education. They want to learn stuff that they were never taught about relationships, about themselves, about families, about parenting, um, about how to solve problems. So they want to learn. The second thing they want is insight. They want to help, help understanding why is such and such happening. So they, they want to gain insight. Um, the third thing that people go to professional helpers for <clears throat> is to solve problems. A problem occurs when one or several people have needs they can't find a way to fill in, a, in an effective, acceptable way. So, people seek therapy or counseling or coaching uh, to either get education, to learn something, to gain insight, or to solve a problem. <coughs> it's good up front to know which of these are you looking to do. Now, as you, after you know what you're trying to do, how can you select an effective counselor or therapist that will give you what you're paying for. It's useful, by the way, to understand broadly the difference between counseling, 
which is largely educational and insight oriented and does not necessarily go back into the past or explore the unconscious mind or emotions. Therapy does all three of the latter. Most therapy, not all, goes back and studies the influences of earlier life traumas and experiences on present day situations. Therapy does that. Counseling probably does not. Uh, therapy often explores the unconscious mind, what you think and feel and need and do and without your consciously knowing it. Counseling usually does not do that. Okay? <clears throat> um, counseling may or may not explore the dynamics in your whole family. family. That's what family therapy is about. It's a specialty type of therapy which uses knowledge of how do groups function well and applies those principles to helping people improve the functioning of their family. So, know the difference between counseling and therapy. <clears throat> coaching and counseling are very similar, by the way, life, life skill coaching. <clears throat> Some criteria to use for counselors or therapists. Feel free to shop. You have the right as a consumer to ask questions of somebody that you're considering hiring. It's legitimate, just like you would hire a plumber or a craftsman to rebuild part of your house. It's okay to ask therapists evaluatory questions before you choose one. Are you licensed <clears throat> and are you experienced at working with individuals, couples, or families? How much experience have you had? How many years? How many clients? Find out. You have a, the right to know that. Um, if a therapist <coughs> seems hesitant or reluctant to describe their educational credentials, any kind of societies professionally that they belong to, um, or their experience level, if they're reluctant to disclose this to you, red light, should go somewhere else. Um, in my biased opinion, <clears throat> as a veteran family therapist, uh, an effective therapist should have knowledge of how to do individual and couple and family systems therapy, all three. Frequently, all three are useful in trying to resolve relationship problems. So ask, are you comfortable? Have you got training? Do you have experience doing individual couple slash marital therapy and family systems therapy? <clears throat> if the person says, well, no, or sort of, or I can do one of those or two of those, keep shopping. It's helpful if not essential, and I'm very biased on this, that <clears throat> a therapist needs to know how to recognize early childhood trauma in a person or each member of a couple and what to do about that trauma. It's essential that a therapist know the seven communication skills that you'll find in lesson two of my free website and how to help people stop fighting and start problem solving. That is essential. It's one of the roots of almost all relationship problems. <clears throat> Another essential in my biased opinion is an effective therapist will have some training and background in recognizing healthy grieving and incomplete grieving. In my experience, incomplete grief is both a symptom of psychological wounds on an individual level and it is a stressor for many relationships where one or both people have not finished grieving some major losses in their life. So, those are some requisites. <coughs> some therapists, for a variety of reasons, will work only with individuals. Some will only work with couples, but not with individual mates. Some will work with couples, not their, not their family, 
Some will work with families, but not couples. My bias is, if you can find a therapist that says, I'm comfortable, trained, and experienced at working with all three, individuals, couples, and couples' families, that is your best bet. <clears throat> it's uh, appropriate and uh, excellent to ask a, a, a potential therapist, if you're about to hire one, tell me, how do you work? What's your strategy generally for resolving relationship problems? I am biased on this. I've done this for a long time. What works for many couples in my experience is if the therapist in his or her own way seeks to help each member, each person in the relationship, what do you need from your partner? There are a bunch of ways of doing that, but they all come out the same way. What do you need? Problems are unfilled needs. So if a therapist does not focus on identifying each person's needs without bias, without ranking, more important, less important, <clears throat> and then focus on what he supposes in the way of your getting your needs met. That to me is an ideal therapeutic strategy for helping people resolve relationship problems. There are many, many different other ways of approaching relationship problems. For me, this one works best. You may see others that work better than that. But be aware of how does the person propose to resolve your relationship problem. Ask. Ask them to be specific. Okay? Another thing that's useful is if the therapist is willing to have you ask them or is willing to hear from you, how does this process feel to you? How am I doing as your employee, the therapist? or the counselor. Are we getting somewhere? Does this process feel useful to you? If not, why not? I think it's essential um, that therapists ask for feedback as you progress along the way. One session, six sessions, 19 sessions. Exchange feedback. Is this process working or is it not? The last thing that I think is useful find out from a prospective therapist. Are you comfortable shifting back and forth between couple therapy, individual therapy with one or both mates, and, and the whole family? If a therapist is not comfortable doing that, look somewhere else. Um, this is a lot of information in a short time. If you want more time to read, uh, to absorb it, read the article in lesson for on what's effective counseling or therapy. I hope this has at least uh, sensitized you that you should ask questions. There are many differences between professional helpers. Uh, it's expensive to get professional help for the most part. So do yourself a favor and your relationship and do some research before you choose a therapist. And uh, I hope you find this useful. Thanks for watching.